OK, welcome back. So last time we saw that you can approximate a derivative using the normal formula that you see from calculus, um, f of t plus delta t minus f of t divided by delta t. And instead of taking the limit as that delta t goes to 0, we just keep a fixed small delta t. Okay? And now we need to know kind of why that works and how well it works under different circumstances. So we're going to introduce the idea of a Taylor series. Now, a lot of you have probably already seen Taylor series from calculus, but I'm going to give a short, um, a short overview and a review of what the Taylor series is and what it does and why it's important. And we're also going to code up an example um, in MATLAB to see exactly what the Taylor series is doing on a simple function sine of t. Okay? So um, in general, if you have a function, so in general, if you have a function f of t plus delta t, okay? So if we have a function of, you know, of a time variable, t plus delta t, and we want to expand this about the point t. So we want to, we want to expand this about the point t. Um, so we say that this is Taylor expanded at t. And we write it in the following way. So we say that f of t plus delta t is equal to, it's equal to my function evaluated at t. Good, I know my function at t. Plus the derivative of my function, df dt, evaluated at t times delta t, okay? Plus um, my second derivative, df squared dt squared, evaluated at t times delta t squared over 2 factorial. And I can keep going and going and going. I'll write the third term uh, just so you see what the pattern is, plus the third derivative d cubed f dt cubed evaluated at my point t in time times delta t cubed over 3 factorial. And I just keep going on and on and on and on to infinity. Okay? So this is... Um, just kind of how you define the Taylor series, okay? So if I have a function f, and let's say that I know what my function f is, and I know all of its derivative, its first, its second, its third derivative at t, then I can approximate what my function looks like at a neighboring point t plus delta t by adding up all of these terms. And you'll notice that this is a polynomial in delta t. Okay, this is the delta t to the 1th power term, the delta t squared, delta t cubed, delta t to the 4th. So it's a big polynomial in powers of delta t, and the coefficients are given by derivatives evaluated at the base point, this point I'm expanding about, t. Okay? Um, good. You can also expand about a point a. I, I can write that down later, but let's do this for an example. Okay, so example is going to be, um, let's try f of x equals sine of x. Good. So this is the function we were looking at last time. And what we're going to do is we're going to Taylor expand f of x equals sine of x at, let's make this sine of t, f of t equals sine of t, at t equals 0. Okay. And any time you Taylor expand about a base point t equals 0. This is called a Maclaurin series. So it's a special Taylor series if your base point is equal to 0. So it's a Maclaurin uh, yep, series. Just a Taylor series with t equals 0 as the base point. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to show that you can take this function, this formula of the Taylor series, I just noticed my t's look a little bit like pluses. You can take this formula and you can evaluate it for this function sine of t. So let's go through and do it. Okay, so f of t plus delta t, right, f of 0 plus delta t, or just f of delta t. <coughs> so let's just write this explicitly. This is sine 
evaluated at delta t, because my base point is 0 and my function is sine. So this is equal to my function evaluated at my base point, my function evaluated at 0. So what's sine of 0? 0. Good. OK, that's 0 plus. OK, what's my derivative of sine? That's cosine. And what's cosine evaluated at 0? Well, that's just 1. So I get a plus 1 delta t, plus 1 delta t. OK, the second derivative of sine is minus sine. And minus sine evaluated at 0 is also 0. So I get no delta t squared terms, so 0 delta t squared terms. But I do pick up some delta t cubed terms because the third derivative of sine is minus cosine. And minus cosine at 0 is minus 1. So I get a minus delta t cubed over 3 factorial. And you'll see that this pattern keeps on going. All of the even powered terms have 0 coefficients because those derivatives are signs of zeros, which are 0. And all of my odd terms have alternating plus and minus signs. So, you know, uh, plus dot, dot, dot. And so if I wrote this down, I would say that my function evaluated at t plus delta t is equal to delta t minus delta t cubed over 3 factorial plus delta t to the 5th over 5 factorial minus delta t to the 7th over 7 factorial, and so on and so forth. And this will just keep going on forever and ever and ever. And the only way that I'll exactly get sine of delta t is if I kept all infinitely many terms in this series. Okay? And notice that each of these terms is getting smaller and smaller because, first of all, delta t is probably small, but more importantly because I'm dividing by this large factorial. And this factorial gets larger and larger really, really fast. So 111 factorial is a huge number in the denominator. Okay, so you're dividing by a huge number for higher and higher terms. So these are getting smaller and smaller, but you need all of them to exactly represent your function at this neighboring point delta t. Okay? So that's the general idea of a Taylor series. Let's say that you know, I have my function at, um, you know, I have my function and I know exactly what it looks like at t. I not only know what it looks like, but I also know its derivative and its second derivative and so on and so forth at this point t. What the Taylor series allows me to do is it allows me to approximate what is my function at t plus delta t uh, in terms of those derivatives at that point. Okay, so I just add up all of these terms, and eventually I'll get a better and better approximation of what my function is at this point. So this makes a lot of sense. If I just had this first term in the Taylor series, so just my function plus a linear term in delta t, your approximation would be here. Not perfect, but it's actually not too bad. Then when you add this quadratic term, it corrects and it gets you closer. And when you have the cubic term, it corrects again and gets you closer still. And the more and more of these terms, the closer you get to the actual function value at this neighboring point t plus delta t. OK, so let's code this up. Um, the sine example is really nice because um, like we know exactly what sine looks like. And it's easy to derive the Taylor series um, for sine evaluated at t equals 0. So we're going to code this up in MATLAB, and we're going to see how good does this approximation if I just keep this term, or both of these terms, or the first three, or four, or five terms. And we're just going to add more and more terms to the Taylor series and show that we get closer and closer to the true function sine of t. OK, good. OK, so at this point, what we're going to do now is we're going to start coding up our example for the Taylor series. Um, so let's try, OK, so we've cleared all. Um, let's make a vector t from minus 10 in increments of 0.01 to 10. This is just my time vector, so I have a nice high resolution vector of time so I can see what's happening. And I'm centering it at 0. And let's create our function f equals sine of t. Good. And we're going to plot t by f in black with a line width 
of 2, so we can see it really clearly. Um, axis minus 10 to 10, minus 10 to 10, um, grid on, hold on. These are just plotting commands so that it looks nice. Let's try this. Okay, so this is my sine function from negative 10 to 10. It's a few periods of sine. And I'm assuming that I know my function and all of its derivatives at time equals 0. Okay, so I know that. And I'm going to use these approximations and I'm going to build up approximations to my sine function um, using more and more terms of this Taylor series. And you're going to see that it gets better and better <coughs> at approximating things. Okay. Now I should probably put an x label of time and a y label of my function, right? It's important. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is our first order Taylor approximation. Good. And our first order Taylor approximation is just a polynomial with coefficients. Um, so in MATLAB, you can write down polynomials. I could say that um, like x cubed plus 2x squared plus x minus 5. In MATLAB, you would write this as a polynomial p equals 1, 2, 1, minus 5. So from highest order down to lowest order. Okay, so this is the cubed term, the squared term, the first order term, and the zero power term. Okay, and that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write this first order approximation as a polynomial, and that polynomial is going to be um, p equals 1, 0. I have 1 in the delta t to the first power, and I have 0 in the constant coefficient, because all the even terms are 0 in this Taylor series. Okay, good. So p is going to equal uh, 1, 0. This is just like um, dt plus 0. Okay. And in MATLAB, there's this nice function called polyval, and it evaluates my polynomial. So let's call this f Taylor 1, my first order Taylor series approximation, equals polyval of my polynomial p at all of my points in time t. Okay. This is a nice built-in MATLAB command, polyval. It evaluates my polynomial, whose coefficients are p, at all the points in time t. Okay, so it builds this polynomial um, in powers of t, and then it evaluates it at this vector of times t. And I'm saying that that's my function approximation Taylor series 1, ft1. And we're going to plot time by ft1 in, uh, let's do a blue dashed line, and let's also keep the line width equal to 1.2. Perfect. Okay, so we see that even with just the first term in our Taylor series approximation, near the point zero, we actually get a pretty good approximation, right? We get the slope right. And so if we had, if we were trying to evaluate sine at values close to time equals zero, this wouldn't be doing such a bad job, but it's really, really bad far away from our base point t equals zero. Good. Okay, let's construct a few more. So our third, we're not going to bother with the second order because there's no delta t squares. There's only delta t cubes. So third order Taylor, our polynomial p would equal, um, okay, so the biggest term, the third order term is minus 1 over 3 factorial. So minus 1 over factorial 3. There's no quadratic term, so it gets a zero coefficient. There is a first order coefficient of one, and the zero order coefficient, the constant term, also has a coefficient of one. So this is a polynomial um, minus delta t cubed over three factorial plus zero delta t squared plus one delta t plus zero. That's what this polynomial is. And we're going to say f Taylor 3, our third order Taylor series approximation, is polyval. We're going to evaluate our polynomial p at our points in time t. And we're going to plot this one. Uh, let's plot this one in red. And it should be getting better and better. Okay? 
So notice that now our red curve is actually agreeing for slightly longer than our blue curve. Okay, so it's doing better for longer by adding another term in my Taylor series. And the hypothesis is that if I add the fifth and the seventh and the ninth, it's just going to get better and better and better. So let's do that real quickly. Okay, so let's do the fifth. This is pretty easy um, to type in. So the fifth order Taylor, my polynomial is going to be, um, the leading term is a positive one over five factorial, one over factorial of five, five factorial, zero in the delta t of the fourth term, minus one over factorial three, zero in the delta t squared term, one in the delta t, zero in the constant. I'm just writing out this polynomial in terms of its coefficients from biggest order to smallest order. Ft5 equals polyval of p at t, and I'm plotting t by f of t5. Uh, what's a nice color for this? Let's try green. Okay, so this green curve, um, I think you can see it on the screen. Again, the green curve is doing even better. It's getting closer and closer. Let's try a seventh order polynomial. And then we'll stop there. Okay, so seventh order Taylor. P equals, I'm just going to copy all of this. Okay, paste. And I only have two more terms. I have a minus one over factorial seven and a zero. Okay. And I'm going to call this factorial 7. I'm going to plot factorial 7. And I'm going to plot it in magenta because I like magenta plots. Okay, so what we're finding here is that this Taylor series really is doing a good job of approximating our sine function near the base point where we defined it, near t equals 0. And as I add more and more terms, I get closer and closer to this actual sine wave. And if I had all infinitely many terms all the way out to, you know, to infinity, this would eventually get every single switch back in the sine function and it would perfectly approximate sine at all points in t. Okay? So this is what the Taylor series does for us. And we're going to use this function, this Taylor series function, to see how good our approximate derivative was. Okay, that's the next segment.